Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Isaiah chapter 59. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isaiah 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, what's iniquity? Our sin. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood. In other words, murder, right? And your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath murdered, muttered, I'm sorry, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs. Uh, what's that? It's a type of deadly snake. I think it's a viper. A venomous viper. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs become not. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hand. You know, people, the those that are covered in the blood of Christ in the resurrection are going to be given white robes. And that's in the book of Revelation. But these people, they're going to be covered with, well, wickedness and lies, right? So, verse 7, Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. There is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither does judgment justice neither doth justice overtake us. We wait in light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, as we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. In other words, physically, they have eyes that can see, but spiritually, they're blind. Spiritually, they're stumbling. Verse 11, we roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none for salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward and and judgment is turned away backward, and justice, justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity, equity cannot enter. What's equity? Uh, being fair and balanced. That's what equity is. You know, somebody offers to buy something from you. You give them 
what do they say, a square deal? Of course, that comes from a Masonic Lodge. But, uh, you know, you give them a fair deal. You don't try to cheat them. Verse 15, Yea, truth falleth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey, and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Now, what's an intercessor? That's somebody that stands between two parties that have a problem. And that's what Christ was for us. He was our intercessor before the Father. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and an helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. Is there a companion verse for this? I think so. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Remember Roadrunner? He had the wily coyote. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let's go back to Isaiah 59, verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. Huh. Yeah, you ever wonder why uh, your demon nominational preachers tell you not to read the Old Testament? Because you might make some connections here. And an helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for, uh, for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion. Who's the Redeemer? Christ, people. If you don't know that, you need to spend some time on the Bible and less on the television, right? I'm being sarcastic. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saying, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. All right, people, that's the end. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.